Hi there. We're uh, going to start Section 11.3 today, and um, this we're really winding down the year right now. Um, we're down to our, one of our last three sections, and this is called Solving Radical Equations. And I put some notes up here, but I think what I want to do as I'm talking through this, I want to review something with you before we get into this, because if I review solving square root equations, I think that will make this easier, because what we're going to do today is very similar to solving a square root equation. So let me just quickly make a new slide. I'm going to quickly make up something like uh, 2x squared minus 50 would equal, let's say, I'm again, I'm just making up something real quick. Let's say uh, 150, okay? Well, to solve a square root equation, you have to get the square root isolated. So the first step would be to add 50 to each side. And that would give me 2x squared on the left, and I'd have 200 on the right. Well, I still don't have the x squared isolated. I, the square isolated, I'd have to divide each side by 2. And when I divide each side by 2, I get x squared on the left, and two divided, uh, 200 divided by 2 is 100 on the right. And then I can take the square root of each side. And what I'm going to find out when I do that is I would get plus or minus 10. Now this is something that we worked on. This would have been in section 10 for last chapter. All right. What we're working on today is very similar to this, except it's not square root functions. We're going to solve radical functions or radical equations. Um, a radical equation is if an equation contains a radical with a variable inside of the radicand, then it's a radical equation. So uh, if you're kind of like, what the heck did he just say there, all right? That just says if we have an equation, remember equation means we have an equal sign involved, so let me, let me just go ahead and write that in. Here would be, okay, I got an equation going. I have a radical with a variable inside of it, and I'll just add plus 5, and we'll make it equal to uh, 12. That would be a radical equation. It meets all these criteria. It has a radical, it has a variable inside the radical, and we have equal sign, meaning it's an equation. There is a radical, radical equation. <coughs> to solve a radical equation, the directions for this are the exact same directions I gave you when we were solving square, um, squares. Okay, if I, if I use square roots to solve, if I was to solve an equation that has a squared term, I must isolate the square. Same idea here. I have to isolate the radical on one side of the equation first. So if we had this particular equation, I have to isolate the radical before I can solve. So to isolate the radical, I see minus 6 and I see times 3. And remember, we're working inverse operations, so I should get rid of the minus 6 first. So I'm going to add 6 to each side. And that's going to give me 3 times radical x equals 6. Well, I've got to get rid of the times 3. So I can divide by 3. And when I divide by 3, I get x, square root of x, I'm sorry, equals 2. Okay, I'm going to go to the next page because I ran out of room here. Okay, I still haven't solved for x. I do know that the square root of x equals 2. Well, to solve for x, let me go ahead. To solve for x, to get rid of the square root, I have to square each side. Remember, as long as you do the same thing to each side of an equation, it stays true or equal. So I, w I don't want to find the square root of x. I want to find x. So if I square each side, the square root and square cancel each other out, and I would get x equals 4. These are problems that you must check your answers on, okay? When you square each side of an equation, I just squared each side of an equation, this, this can give you a, what's called an extraneous solution, all right? In other words, an extraneous solution means that if we square it, it will work, but it would not actually work in the original equation. So, unfortunately, whenever you square each side of an equation, like right here, you notice I squared, let me turn on my layer, I squared each side of my equation. Whenever you square each side of an equation, you must check your answers because 
because you could get what's called an extraneous solution, which means the work is right, but the answer itself doesn't actually work. So let's check this one. Let's go back and see does 4 work. Um, here we go. If I plug in 4 right here, the square root of 4 is 2, and 3 times 2 is 6, and 6 minus 6 does equal 0. This is an actual solution. Okay, and that's what I just showed here. I did check 4. I plugged it in. Square root of 4 is 2. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 minus 6 is 0. This is definitely a true solution. All right. Again, I'm going to just have you, I'll, I'm just going to walk you through some practice ones. The key to each of these radical equations is to isolate the radical on one side first. So here, I got to get the square root of x minus 5 isolated which means plus 7 I got to get rid of. Well, to get rid of plus 7, I would take away 7 from each side. Now I have the radical isolated. So I can now square each side. Now when I square each side, remember, a square root and a square will cancel each other out, which me leaves me with x minus 5 on the left, and I have 25 on the right. And now I can add 5 to each side to solve for x. And I get 30. I need to check this, because remember, I can get extraneous solutions. And we'll, we'll show you some examples of extraneous solutions here in a little bit. But let's check. Let's see if I plug in 30 if this works. So I'll go back up to the top. If I plug in a 30 up here, 30 minus 5 is 25. The square root of 25 is 5, and 5 plus 7 did indeed give me 12. So yes, um, 30 would be a solution. Okay, what if an equation has two radicands in it? Uh, you can see examples of that in your homework. If you go ahead, um, by the way, if you're on page 732 right now, I'm going to give you a second to do that if you take your book and you go to page 732, and you look through the problems, um, you'll notice that we just did a couple problems, sample questions, that would have been very similar to what you might see from numbers 3 through, let's say, 11, or maybe 12, or even 13. Okay, but then, if you look at numbers 14 to 20, you'll notice that there are two radicands in the problem. So what do we do if there's two radicands in the problem? Well, the first thing we would do, you know, let's write the equation down. You must make sure if there's two radicands in the problem that one radicand is on the left side of the equal sign and the other radicand's on the right side. So I want to make sure before I do anything that I have radicands on each side. So in this case, I had to add square root x to each side because I did not want two radicands on the left. I need one on the left, one on the right. Okay, now once you have a, a radicand on each side, you can now square each side to get rid of the radicands. So I'm going to do that. I squared the left and I squared the right. Now remember, when you square radicals, the square root and the square will cancel out the square root and the square will cancel out, and you're going to be left with here 4x minus 3 equals x. Okay, well, this is easy enough. Now you can solve for x. Now to solve for x, I've got to get all the x's on one side, everything else on the other, so I'm going to do that. I'll take away x from each side, which gives me 3x minus 3 equals 0. I can then add 3, because I want to get x by itself, so I have 3x on the left, 3 on the right, and divide each side by 3, and I got x equals 1. Okay, I should check this now. Let's see if x equals 1 actually works. If I plug in a 1 here, I have 4 times 1, which is 4, and 4 minus 3 is 1. And if I plug in here, I get 1. So the square root of 1 is 1, and the square root of 1 is 1, and 1 minus 1 did indeed give me 0. I did check it, and it worked. Here's another problem. Um, this would look uh, very similar to what you see in questions 22 through 27. All right, we want to solve and check for extraneous solutions. So let's let's solve this. Well, first of all, if you have a radical on one side of the equation, a radicand, 
that's when you want to square each side. So I do have a radic end all isolated on one side. So let's square each side. So I'm going to do that. On the left side, you notice a square root and a square will cancel. So I end up with 3x plus 4 equals x squared. Uh, now, pay close attention to this. Do you notice how this is a second degree problem? We can't solve this like we did the last problem, because if you look at the last problem, you notice this is first degree. Well, first degree is linear. We solve linear equations different than we would solve second degree. Remember, second degree is a quadratic. Okay, you have a quadratic here. So whenever you have a quadratic, it's best to think, are we going to factor? Let me turn that layer on here. Are we going to factor this? Do we want to complete the square and use square roots? Do we want to use the quadratic formula? Um, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking this is pretty easy to factor because I know that negative 4 times positive 1 is negative 4, but negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. So, my, so negative 4 and positive 1 multiply out to negative 4. Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. Factoring is easy. I get two solutions. If I plug a 4 in here, I get 0. If I plug a negative 1 in here, I get 0. I have two solutions. I have 4 and negative 1. Okay, but remember, I've got to check this. I've got to check for extraneous solutions. So let's check these, okay? Let's plug in 4 first. If you plug in 4 here, you're going to have 3 times 4 is 12, and 12 plus 6, I'm sorry, 12 plus 4, let me freeze this, my phone's ringing. Apologize for that, my phone was ringing, I had to answer the phone. So anyway, um, x is 4, so if I plug in 4, let's check that, 3 times 4 is 12, and 12 plus 4 is 16, so I get 16 in here. If I plug in 4, I have 4 here. Let's see, is the square root of 16 equal to 4? Uh, the square root of 16 is 4. So yes, x equals 4 checks. Now let's see if negative 1 works, because according to this, one of my roots is negative 1. Let's plug in negative 1. Let me go back up to the top. If I plug in negative 1 here, I have 3 times negative 1 plus 4. That's positive 1. If I plug in negative 1 here, I get negative 1. Is the square root of 1 equal to negative 1? Uh, no, it's not. Okay, square root of 1 equals 1, not negative 1. That's giving me an extraneous solution. And uh, so that would be an example of an extraneous solution. That solution did not work in this situation. Okay, whenever we're doing square roots here, um, when we're solving for a radical equation, we always assume that the square root is going to be the positive root, okay? Um, let me get this thing out of the way. I think I have one more example. Let's look at number 22 in the book work. This would be an example just like the one I previously walked through. I do have a square root isolated, so I'm going to square each side. And squaring each side will cancel the square root and the square. On the right side, I have x squared equals 42 minus x. I can move everything to one side and put 0 on the other. Now, this is easy to factor because isn't positive 7 times negative 6 negative 42? But positive 7 plus negative 6 is 1. So this would factor into x plus 7, x minus 6 equals 0, which means I get two solutions. x could be 7 or x, I'm sorry, x could be negative 7 or x could be 6. I misspoke. x could be negative 7. If I plug in a negative 7 here, I get nothing. If I plug in 6 here, I get nothing. So negative 7 and 6. Let's check. Because you can see I already crossed out one of these. This is extraneous. Let me show you why. If you plug in negative 7 here for x, and you plug in negative 7 here for x, you get 42 minus negative 7, which is 49. The square root of 49 is 7. And, but x over here is negative 7, so those do not work out. But if you plug in 6, 6 will work. Um, if you put a 6 here and a 6 here, this is 36 under here. The square root of 36 does give you 6. So 6 does check, negative 7 doesn't. I hope that video made sense, all right? 
obviously, if any questions, we can go over those in class tomorrow.